All right, so I'm gonna make myself a dial gauge indicator adapter, and I'm gonna use it, uh, I'm gonna use a spark plug. I'm, I'm working on an, a 78 Yamaha DT175, and I need a top dead center tool. Uh, so uh, I don't have a plan uh, per se. Uh, what I'm gonna do first off is I'm just gonna try to get the porcelain core out of there, and I'm just gonna try to get this you know, broken down into just a, a metal um, adapter. And then I'll figure out what I need uh, as far as a filler. I might have to insert a core or something. I might have to weld something on there. But so that's what I'm going to do. Um, this is the actual spark plug that came out of that uh, motorcycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off uh, the uh, the grounding strap here. And then I'm going to cut this off at the pores at right here. And then I'm actually just going to get my flap disc and grind, grind this collar off. And then I'll see about going over to my uh, my larger vise and punching this the whole core out from the uh, from the bottom. I'll see if I can get that to work. Porcelain is hard. Good grief. Hmm. Hacksaw? All right, so I just took a hammer and I just, a couple of smacks and it just shattered it. So that was much easier than cutting through that porcelain because I don't, I actually don't know what cuts through porcelain. I'd have to find some type of abrasive uh, disc that's uh, harder than a cutting disc, I guess. So. There we go, that worked. All right, well, I wanna see what else I can do with the hammer. So I'm gonna see if I can actually, so it doesn't look like that will pound out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna cut this off with my, uh, with the, the cutting wheel, just, I don't know, somewhere as close as I can. And then I'm just gonna grind down this little collar right here. It looks like, that's what was used to kind of press fit and hold the porcelain in there. So I think if I grind this down all the way to where this neck is, grind this neck all the way down, I think I might be able to just punch it out from the other side. That's what I'm gonna try. All right, let's see how my flat disc does. Okay, so I ground it down to where I think it's no longer, you know, like, overlapping and like hooking up over the porcelain. So I'm gonna turn this around and smack it from the other side and see if I can get this porcelain core to come out. Okay, so after one whack, the electrode uh, did move. So I'm gonna whack that again then probably just pull it out with pliers. Porcelain's kind of shattering everywhere. I'm gonna cut myself. And then I think maybe with that, I'll just be able to break the porcelain up and just I don't know, maybe that'll give me enough to just, just break it, I guess. I don't know. So let's get the electrode out. Okay, so, so far, um, I was able to just pull that electrode out with pliers after I smacked it a couple of times. Um, so, so far, I haven't needed any fancy lathe equipment to uh, break down this uh, spark plug body. So uh, unlike what I've seen uh, so far on YouTube, you need a fancy lathe and machining skills to do this. So, so far I'm proving that not to be true. Okay, it worked. So basically, uh, I have a spark plug body that is the 14 by 1.25 threads that I need. So now I am going to figure out uh, how I'm going to secure. So I'll drill a hole in the side here so that I can uh, insert a set screw. So I'll drill it and then I'll tap it. But before I do that, I've got to go get my dial gauge. So this is all just happening in the spur of the moment. So I think I'm going to go to Harbor Freight tomorrow, see if I can find a dial gauge. I think they've got one for like 15 bucks. So I'll need to get the diameter of the shaft, and then we'll kind of have to start figuring out how I'm going to uh, fill up the center here so that it has the correct... Um, I want it to be a tight fit. 
if it's like three eighths of an inch or whatever, I'll have to figure out some type of insert. So what I could easily do is if I can find a, some stock that at least gives me the right inside diameter, then I can just stick that in there and weld it. And then I can fill weld all the way to the, to the edges. So I don't know. We'll see. It's a work in progress, but so far again, nothing, uh, no fancy machinery to do this job. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I've actually cleaned this out really good with my Dremel wire brush attachment. And so I've got nice clean metal. Basically what I've got here is just a spark plug body that I am about to fill up with weld. So I'm going to start right there at that bottom bevel. If you can kind of see where that bevel starts and I'm just going to start filling it up. So I'm going to fill it up all the way to the top and then I'm going to flatten it up, flatten it off. And then I'm going to drill from this side uh, to the size that I actually need. So I tried to find some other inserts or something that would make this, you know, easier. But I don't know. It's pretty easy to just take the MIG welder and just shove a bunch of wire in there. So that's what I'm about to go do. I hope I don't have it clamped too tight. Yeah, I'm going to give it a minute. That thing's hot. I hope it didn't deform. I got that sucker pretty hot. Alright, I'm just going to let it cool. So there we go, got it all filled up. Got that sucker hot. So now I'm gonna go flatten the top and then I'm just gonna kind of clean up the, so one of the things that I would caution you on is I had it pinched a little bit tight in the, in the vise. And so when this thing got red hot and molten, like it actually deformed a little bit. So I don't know, don't do what I did. And just leave it loosely in the vise, just enough that your your weld will ground. I mean, you'll you'll notice my grounding lead was just on my vise, not on the part itself. But you only you just need to clamp it just enough to get a good ground uh, for the weld. But. Okay, so now I'm just gonna. I have a drill bit here that's just slightly smaller than uh, that hole. So I'm just gonna kind of start cleaning it out and getting everything uniform. Okay, so I got the pilot hole drilled successfully. And it's actually pretty centered. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm not using like precision equipment here. I don't have like this precision drill press with level table and all that other stuff. This is like a bench top drill press. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to the next size up. I'm basically gonna go do this, that size hole, and then I'm gonna come in from the other side with the actual size bit that I need, which I haven't measured yet. So I gotta go get my caliper. Okay, so I got it. It actually, I mean, it's turned out halfway decent for, you know, about a half hour's worth of work. Um, considering, you know, I don't have a lathe and machinist tools, but, um, one of the issues that, that I had is this is nine and a half millimeters in diameter on the, uh, the dial gauge. So the next step up that I had was 9.75 millimeters in diameter. And so I have a little bit of play. It's not bad. Um, I think... I think once I actually drill, so I've got a set screw, so I'm going to go drill that in, and then uh, 
I'll tap the uh, that hole and then I'll we'll have a set screw that I'll use to maybe stabilize it if I can get it to but main thing is I just want to see if I can get that centered as much as possible um, so I haven't ruled out like wrapping the shaft in this of this in some type of electrical tape remember this doesn't really matter like the precision is once you have this down in the hole at that point nothing needs to move that's that's the important thing so once you have it set and you have the piston that starts coming up then you can set your zeros and all that stuff and we'll go over that in in uh, another video clip here but so it's not like this has to be exact. This doesn't have to be a precision machined tool. Um, it just needs to be that when we screw it in the spark plug hole, when the piston starts to come up and make contact with this, that this does not, that this actually is rigid and it doesn't, it can't wobble. It can't move around like that. So we'll see what happens when I put the, when I put the set screw in. So, so, so far so good. I'm doing it without pre precision or fancy uh, tools. I think the most, the fanciest tool that I've had so far is the welder. So hopefully, I mean, I think there's more people out there that have welders than have lathes. So I guess that's, I'll still, I'll stick with my claim that I'm doing this without fancy tools. All right, so I drilled a, it's a quarter 20 thread. Um, it took a 0.203 drill bit. All right, there we go. So I've got my quarter 20 set screw. It's nice, uh, threads feel nice and solid. So, let's see if I can give you, there we go. go so look so I got the set screw in there and that now it's nice and centered up it's actually it's actually pretty solid there's no play so I didn't have to add tape or, or fill that gap or anything so there we go so guys I did this uh, I made this dial gauge adapter spark plug adapter with a spark plug and no fancy tools again the fanciest tool I used was a was a welder so no lathe no fancy machining knowledge needed although if you do have fancy machining knowledge you're going to do a better job than this and that's fair but uh there you go so overall the gauge was 18 dollars the spark plug body was free it was laying around the garage the set screw was i don't know there's a set of two for like a dollar so under 20 bucks um, if I were to order this online, it would have cost me somewhere between 60 and 150 bucks to get the Yamaha or some type of branded tool. So uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the way that it turned out. I think it's going to work well. It's nice and solid.